entrepreneurship is is the buzzword. It's the buzzword for, I guess, the last few years now. Everyone's being an entrepreneur, self-made, and stuff like that. Or um, YouTube made. <laughs> either, it, whatever it is. But um, I'm going to read a quick excerpt and I'll ask the question. Mm. He says, Gary says, with entre- entrepreneurship becoming so trendy, a lot of people are calling themselves entrepreneurs who really aren't. They should, should, they should call themselves entrepreneurs <laughs> instead. And I wish they'll do this before they ruin the reputation of real entrepreneurs, the same way unscrupulous brokers ruin how some feel about real estate really? agents or the way amb- ambulance chasers and media hounds tarnish our opinions of lawyers. What's your definition of an entrepreneur? <sighs> okay, mine is just somebody who sets out product idea and will not stop until they achieve it. Yeah. Gets it out there. That's my opinion. It's nothing to do with money. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's only to do with getting an idea out there or a product and, and, and getting it in front of as many people as you can. That's my idea of an entrepreneur. What about you boys? I can't break it down any simpler than when it's like yeah. you got a concept and you can yeah, you got a concept, you brand it, you put it out there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, same. Okay. I think uh, a businessman, you see, as you said, I, I mean you said it quite eloquently, but to, to have an opportunity, believe in it and, and go with it. Mm. Yeah, business. Uh, yeah, it's it's a new term, but it's you're a businessman. You see a business, you see an opportunity, you want to make a profit of some sort, and uh, you go for it. Mm. Willing to take the leap for me. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. the that's big one. It, when yeah. it comes down to you, ready to to bet on yourself, hedge your bets, and, and I like that. that. Bet on yourself. That yeah. is very very good. Mm. You want to add to that, Mace, at all? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um. I'm gonna find the next question. Just bear with well, you do that, and I know it's gonna come. Up, I know it comes up further in the book. Mm-hmm. But what's your thoughts on the whole this social media boom that's happened in the last? So we've grown up in it. I remember trying using Tiskily broadband and big dial-up connection and all that. Man, I what's remember your... Baby Ericsson's. <laughs> <laughs> Changing faces. Do, 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 do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I remember see. I had a see-through bad boy, Baby Ericsson. Took 20 minutes to send a text. Yeah. Texting my mum because none of my bridges had phones. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? I remember that. So now social man. Like I, like, I remember when I first come in here. What I said to you. Like, I've only jumped on social media three months ago. I used to go, yeah, I'm social, not working. And yeah. I used to think I was cool saying it. Yeah. And then you realise what it's actually opened up. Cool. It's only just a follow on from your point and your, sorry, your question about entrepreneurship and yeah. all the rest of it, because the social element <sighs> right now is just, sure. there's so many, pe- so many youngsters out there. When I say mm. youngsters, I say like, the late kids. teens, the even kids, kids playing with toys, yeah. 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 getting views and money and sponsorship. Yeah. 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 And it's just, I just wanted to know people's opinion on that. Oh, man, that's such a hard one. People are going to hit me up, man. All right. So I think it's great for what it, what, it, what, it, what the reach. Yeah. Yeah. And how you can, re- yeah, literally the reach. But I also think communication is being destroyed. Absolutely. People don't know how to talk to each other. Of course. Mm-hmm. People I do think... not know how to communicate, man. Yeah. Shocking. There's so many people literally can't, like in front of the camera, but you talk to them one on one. They can't. They can't. They can't string a sentence. And it's like, wow, what happened to that, that prowess? It's true, it's what, happened to, it's, it's true, it? what happened to that prowess? Yeah. What happened? Sorry, I'm sorry to go because uh, we meet every week, all right. And I was working in a secondary school, all right, in behaviour, and incidents will happen. Give them the form. They go right out, and more often than not, the teacher will go. You got to write it from. Excuse me, I got to write it for him. What's he here for? He can't read. He can't write. And then I okay, get cool. No worries. Explain to me what happened. A bit, a bit, a bit. <laughs> yeah. What is going on yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, like, what's going on here? Yeah. And he go, Andrew. That's literally it. You got, you got to listen to. You got. You got to be, be patient. Be patient. He's had like ten years of schooling. And he can't talk to me. <laughs> you know what's crazy, P as well. I don't know if you remember this. I'm not gonna say there's a because. My guilty pleasure is I love the UK music scene. Yeah. I listen to all that That's kind of under pleasure though. Yeah. It is, man, at my age. At my age, listening nah, to man, that. You're young. Nah, you're young. young. Yeah. Yeah. My age, listening yeah. to that. All this, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> it's but, but like, P and French, they like a few tunes, but I'm in it. Like, I know okay. the game. Uh, like, yeah. But like, basically, I remember once. Beef and who? And <laughs> 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 you're knee deep. Hey. So anyway, there was one time me and Peter having a conversation with someone that was on a come up. They, they've actually established now, but it was on a come up at the time. And every time they release a new tune, it'd be like, yo, this guy's got personality. This guy <laughs> emphasises every point. Then he went, he done an interview on um, uh, one of them, yeah. like, um, one of them, uh, uh, what do you call them? One the, of them The music, platforms. yeah, one yeah. of the music platforms are big. Then on an interview, 
this guy is a... Uh, no. Like, it's just... And literally, what do you say to me, Pocker? I know he's got all this personality on the track. Come on, where's this personality <laughs> now? <laughs> like, it was just disappointing. Yeah, yeah. It was real disappointing. Yeah. And it just, it just brings back to the whole thing about people don't know how to speak to each other. They're just gamers and or they're just, you know, messaging on Snapchat or WhatsApp. It's just no more vocal. Do you know what but I mean? Do you think, like, in the future, because it's, you know, it's going to come up again later, but in terms of we've got all these apps, there's going to probably be an app to to combat this at some point. Do you not think where nah. there's going to be something where you don't have to be so you could be socially inadequate but be able to get your point across via an app. You can just t- type something and it'll verbalise. I think something. that's there already. That's I mean, there already, man. Yeah, was, how did yeah. Steve, was it Stephen Hawking used to communicate like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think Bron was there already. <laughs> but I mean, but on a, on a large basis, that like, a lot of the, it, it will become a thing so you don't really have to verbalise. How we're doing that's right sad, now. That's sad, man. That'd be very that's, sad. That's that to me is super it's a sad, man. Yeah. It's a possibility. Do you know what? If you watch film anyway, if you watch like like uh, Demolition Man and what all these things, yeah. <laughs> Demo- Demolition Man, big boy, has got the key. I like that. You know, I love that. The old school Wesley, you know. Yeah. When Wesley was rolling, yeah. Old school Wesley. What? Yeah, when you watch them films, yeah. there, you get a, you get a, you, and you can see the disconnect there. Mm. So it probably is going there. I always say, film shows you what we're going to expect. Happen. It, yeah. it mm. just lets us down nicely. It's like, listen, humans, yeah, we're going to show you a little bit now. I this remember. is my conspiracy side. Yeah, we're going to let you down nicely yeah. because if we were to show you right now, you're going to freak thing. out. Yeah, you're going to go mad. It's going to be a mazza. So let's just not. Yeah. So, what you said, can it happen? Will it literally be app? Like for absolutely everything, yeah. And it's but it's sad, man. Mm. It's really sad. I was talking to oh god, I forget who he worked for. I was gonna say Apple. Um anyway, I forget what they were doing as such, but he was explaining to me where they built this like AI technology mm-hmm. and I think they they built an AI technology and I think they might have had another one somewhere, and it got to a point where one found the other yeah. And began communicating. They had yeah. to shut the whole oh, thing yeah, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said it became. They started it, speaking their own language. Yeah, he yeah, said like, "Yo, we're shut down." Yeah. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Just there. There's a book called Our Final Invention. Okay. Do not read the book. You will not want to come outside. <laughs> <laughs> Being serious, yeah. it explains to you properly. It's exactly that mm-hmm. and why and what they would look to do for energy and how it how it can tip. Oh my gosh! It is so scary. You have to send me that name of the book. Hundred percent, but. Approach with caution, man. Yeah, of Approach with caution, now, man. The, the guy, the guy, um, oh, so the guy lived, was living in a big city. I think he was living in California. And he said, you know what? He goes, all this technology is going to come hit the big cities. He goes, I'm moving to a remote city, mate, where it's not going to come there. I don't want to be affected in any way, shape, or form. 100%. In the, in the desert with the Bedouins. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, out of the system. Or, yeah. Um, yeah. Out of the network and stuff. Um, going on to a point that you mentioned, Pete, earlier on, where he says, uh, I also believe that there are humans who fall into the 51%. That is, if your nature is at least 51% altruistic and only 49, 49% selfish, you have a real shot at breaking out because the vast majority of people are 70 to 99% selfish. Um, individually, what would you say you guys are in regards to altruistic versus selfish? <laughs> On camera or off camera? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this, and it's got to be very, very true. Like Anyone who knows me will, will back this up. I'd say I'm probably 30% selfish 70% altruistic and the reason is is because I've achieved quote unquote (laughs) so much already Mm -hmm. and I understand that the success that most people chase when they get it it's just like I got a Ferrari I got diamond car keys you lose it and the only thing you ever value is the journey and the people around you Mm. so for me I guess that already like I know that for this journey that I'm on this round two call it Mm -hmm. I know that I could probably start monetizing already. Mm-hmm. I could probably start doing a few things already. I'm getting it, but I'm not going to. Yeah. I'd rather just generally see a man and go, do you know what? This is what I did. And I know that most people respect me because of the shit I have got, mm-hmm. which is mad shallow. They'll mm-hmm. go, you know what? You've you've earned the type of stuff. So if you're telling me to go and look at this, invest, do this, do this, read books, do this, I'm going to take that opinion and I'm going to run with it. So for me, that's my, like that's 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 what I'm here to give. And I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm giving a hell of a lot more than that mm-hmm. than, than what I'm trying to get back from yeah, yeah. because of all the valuable materialistic <laughs> bullshit that I've had already. Yeah. I don't know, man. No, that's good, man. What about that's you, good. boys? Honest, honest answer. Honestly, 
Do you know what? Why don't we judge each other? I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I actually don't know what I did to give yourselves. That's the problem. Just anyone. What would you say for, for, for Mace or for myself? Either. No fist swing in between. <laughs> Which um, going to make me some money. Make it snappy anyway. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, I'm going to say 60 40 in regards to the French. Um, the yeah. reason why I say 60 40. Mm. On what side? Altruistic, selfish? No, 40 is selfish. Okay. Um, yeah, and the reason why I say mm. that is because I mean, you spoke about um, things that you would like to do. I don't want to divulge as such. And if you're asking me personally, I think that's more sharing than anything else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'll go 60 40. And I'm going to say. Actually, being honest. Mm. Like, no, 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 I was going to say 64 as well, but I don't yeah. know where Mason really is at this moment in time. Okay. Now, the reason why I say that, because yeah. he's doing a lot, obviously, everyone's doing stuff for themselves, yeah. but some of the stuff that we might have spoke about previously, I don't think he's attending to them at this moment in time, but that just might be the space he is in now. But as a person, yeah. I'd say he's ultimately, I mean, the things that we've been discussing in terms of sharing with, yeah. whether it's the youth and so on and so forth, he has openly spoken about that as well. It mm. just might be at this moment in time, this is where he is, where he's working on him and himself. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. How would you say, right, take that away, how would you say, because we, Poco and I went high school together, so you know each other for a number of years, so you know me very well. If you go back, how would you say, just as a person, to friends, uh, family? Oh, uh, no, no, I, I couldn't fault him. Yeah. Yeah. See there? <laughs> <laughs> God. God, I love that. I think, um, I'll go next. I think with French, I would say 55, 45. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is, French is a man who, whereas I'm a man, I think I take after my father in that, I'm a man, I'll have a lot of attachments, but not necessarily close, close friends, mm. yeah? French is a man, if you're his brethren, he's got, like, yeah. when I say he's got you, he's got you. So he'll rather have a small handful of people, but believe if you're part of that group, that means something big to him. Do you get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so, when yeah. I, so when I say the 55 foot I don't mean in terms of, right, if, he's, if, he, if 100 pounds drops to four, he's taking 55 and dropping man 45. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? But yeah. it's more to do with, like, he focused on himself and only those in the media around. Whereas with me, I've got a lot of family and friends yeah. and I want to see everyone do one. Sometimes I'm a little bit too um, uh, selfless, if Listen, that makes sense. Let me tell you, I've, I've, I understand that. And what ends up happening a lot is people take advantage. Yeah. People take advantage and they don't yeah. even take advantage because they, do you know what? They don't even take advantage intentionally. They take advantage because the opportunity is there and they yeah. want to be a part of it. So I get that. Yeah. And I, that's the reason why I respect, man. It takes mad discipline to be able to be like that, whereby it is literally like, you know what? Yeah. yeah. People are close to me. I've got you. Everybody else. Yeah. Up middle finger. You, do you know, know what, what I mean? That's the mm. word we use to, to summarise for it. It's disciplined. Yeah. Disciplined. Yeah. You can tell anyway, man. Disciplined. You can tell. I can, <laughs> I can feel that. I can feel yeah. that. Don't fuck with his things in the morning when he's writing down his fight. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna achieve nah. <laughs> um, With Pox, what what I would say about Pox, as I say, I've known Pox for years. Pox was too damn selfless. Oh, when yeah. we were too I would, selfless I would agree with that. when we when we when we were kids growing up. Too selfless. Like to the extent like we used to have to tell him, bro, like you've got a little bit of size. You have to wild out on some people sometimes. Yeah. I'll they, agree with that. I'm skinny yeah. and I, when I, it's time, I, 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 I will tell that. people, yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so and Pox was too selfless. <laughs> And maybe some people took advantage, but then I think you went through a little streak where it was like, it's me, like, it's just me out here. And I think you've reined that back in now, but I think you're very focused at the moment. And, and I think there's there's a difference between being selfish and focused. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I like and that. I think Pox is very focused at the moment. And because of that, he can't give as much time or energy to, to, to groups or people. It's nothing to do with him not caring. It's just the fact that he's very focused. Yeah. So with that, I think I would say at the moment where you're at is probably about sixty-five, no, nah, sixty forty as well, okay. or fifty-five forty-five. Um, for me, from my opinion, from from my opinion, looking at you two, I would say Mace, you're fifty-five forty-five. Wow. Um, just because like mm. certain things, I'll ask you at a drop of a hat. So um, we're doing a door let door. Oh yeah, door yeah, letter, yeah. Door letter, a letter yeah, dropping yeah. campaign. Yeah. yeah. And I need envelopes to go and post letters. And he's in a position where he can get a lot of envelopes and I'll say, oh, can you get X, Y, Z? And he'll get them quick, like, not a problem. You didn't, even, you didn't realise I had them. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. Like, just instantly. And it's always been that from the day that we started the business, that like, you've always been there to to pitch in whether I've asked for this amount or mm. X, Y, Z, you know what I mean? And I thought, that, you know what, that's, that's dope still. Mm -hmm. And with P, I guess it's quite similar because I think you put yourself out a lot especially when we're doing the free book stuff. I know when we first started, and as I may have explained, I'm the anti-social <laughs> media one. I'm not, 
trying to be on camera and do all the posts and all things like that. That that's not my thing, but P's been the one that's always pushing us forward to to go forward and, and do it. And he's obviously got a lot of things going on, and he spends time to make sure those things are done. So yeah, no, definitely, a, I think a sixty forty in terms of. So just in regards to like the those this one or two things that you mentioned. Mm. Like when I was doing certain things, so I was doing things with my brother, fully booked, and there's one or two other bits and pieces, and then I realised I'm losing. Yeah. I'm losing. Then, like, uh, for example, like, um, I asked me a question, I think, this today, am I going to pick them up? And I th- and I, I think I might have mentioned it last week, I knew already I wouldn't be able to pick them up because I knew my... T- oh, I knew where my time was going to be on a Tuesday, <coughs> probably last week, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And in so I've, I, I, I've got no problem picking them up. Like, travelling doesn't matter, like, 20, 30 minutes or wherever it is, not a problem for me. But I knew that's the one thing I couldn't do this week because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to see him for at least an hour or so beforehand. I had to work beforehand and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so I'm aware that unfortunately there's certain things or obligations, not obligations, things that I do for other people generally, yeah. which I actually can't do. But I think, yeah, mm. I think you're not scared to say no anymore. Not anymore, Whereas no. Back in the day, anymore, I would have no. said you bend over backwards to do stuff for people. Yeah. And it's mad because like, I was in a um, business partnership with someone <clears throat> And it took, I don't know why it took that everyone is, but it took that to or it took that to happen in terms of us going in a different direction for me to think, yo, what is going on out here? Because for the first time in a long time, I almost lost who I was in terms of identity. Mm. I mean, I was doing things which are really, really good, but um, truth be told, I was probably doing him doing it for him and his vision. Although it suited me at the time, I was probably doing it for him rather than myself. And it mm. took that to happen to realise, actually, I've really got to knuckle down and redirect my focus as to what I'm doing. It's funny. Do you think the word no is a is a, is a bad word? No, um, <coughs> Some people have such a struggle saying it. Mm. You see it all the time. Yeah, people I think I do struggle. People, people have been someone that I would say would have struggled beforehand, but you're, as May said, you're getting better at it, definitely. Yeah, so like he would ask me, so I used to say that, um, he would ask me about my brother, and um, no, well not, no, he asked me my brother, um, I'd tell him about my brother, he's asked me to do this, that and the third, and I would say, actually, you're now, you're the reason why I can't do X, Y, Z, mm. and then recently, we've had a conversation, I'd be telling him, yeah, I'm doing this for my brother now, I'm doing this, <laughs> no, no, it's true though, but I'm saying, yeah, you've, you've kind of yeah, yeah, doing this, and, yeah, I've kind of gone yeah. back on what I've said, but I now know kind of where to say, this has now become a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, moving on slightly, uh, from page 39, uh, he mentions about ego. Uh, no, he mentioned a statement I thought was a very ego-driven statement. Now, do you think ego's uh, a necessary thing in business? Ooh. Part of me thinks it or is. Or to succeed in general, I don't even just business. It is, man. Mm-hmm. It is. It depends how you define ego. If you define ego by, I think I'm better than you, a tough one man mm. but if you define ego as in I want to be my best self and I want people to see that like you have a standard mm-hmm. like Tony Robbins always talks about it standard raise your standard. raise your standard if you want anything raise your standard yeah. that to me is my new ego mm-hmm. my old ego was I'm better than everyone yeah. do you mm-hmm. see what I mean yeah, yeah, and definitely. I think that's dangerous because ultimately I say it's, I always use this analogy it's like any rapper musician they get the, they get the limelight for five years or whatever what not mm-hmm. then somebody's going to take it and if that's your ego, if it's I'm better than anyone, you've got the limelight for five years, so what happens after? And I've been in that position, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So now it's like, I'm going to show my best self. Mm-hmm. And that ego, I think I think, I think, think you need to have that. Otherwise, it's very easy to just go, when things go wrong, I'm going to chill. Yeah. You used to stop going to ask you first with the questions, bro. <laughs> 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 I've seen my face. <laughs> <like that. laughs> I had a perfect <laughs> book. <laughs> 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 mm. I said it's, it's an open form anyone sorry man sorry man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's what I'm going to say makes sense <laughs> <laughs> what do you think French just spinning the question back on yourself um, yeah I think ego there's a I think with anything it's balance you need a balance um, ego is definitely needed as you said it can set a standard like I could be egotistical and Okay, so I'm gonna go door knocking and get X amount of clients. You know you're gonna get those few places, but in the back of your head, you gotta have that ego to be like, I know I'm getting these clients. Mm. Like you, you need to be working with me. You, that, that's that ego inside of me. It's like I got this. Mm. Like, do you know who I am? Mm. Exactly. Me. Yeah. You need like yeah. that's the ego talking, but you need it sometimes. Hundred percent. And not to be like I'm too bossy or do you know what I mean? Because if I if I didn't 
if my ego is too boasty, I wouldn't be knocking <clears> on <throat> people's doors to get their, their clients, you know what I mean? You saved yourself. So, yeah, but, <laughs> but it's a perspective, again, as, as Alfie's saying, right? it's a perspective, you need to have that balance. You can't mm. be too egotistical and it becomes a detriment to you, but also I don't think you should have no ego and you get walked over and you don't. no one pays you any attention or gives you any... Um, yeah, as I said, any attention to, to want to do anything with you. It's, it, it's literally such a fine line, isn't it? Mm. So fine line whereby people see him and go, oh yeah, he's confident, whatever, whatnot, he's got a good ego, yeah, whatever, whatnot, yeah. let's fuck with him. Yeah. And then the other side where people are like, I can't wait for him to fail. Yeah, yeah. yeah I cannot wait for him to fail. Exactly. I cannot wait for him to fail. Line. So it's a, it's, it's a proper thin line, man. Mm. Do you, want, do you want to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I agree with both of you. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> you know what, you know what, I kind of forgot what I was going to say, but in regards yeah. to ego, I think it's definitely, I think it's definitely necessary. I mean, in regards to, sorry, like I worked in football, so no, what? Yeah, I say well, I want to be loose with it because I'm trying to. See when he said it's weird at the beginning. This is this is what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so, no, so I was an academy scout, academy academy scout, seriously, senior scout and academy coach at Fulham Football Club. I'm 34 now, so I was doing this. I was probably doing that. 10 ish years ago when I first started. Probably and younger than that. Yeah, younger yeah, than younger. that. So I had a lot of success in terms of like finding players and all that type of stuff. So my thing is, I've, I've, my passion for football is deep rooted. People don't even know how crazy passionate I am about football. When I'm Ubering, I've got football highlights on sometimes in the car. That's how, but I, I don't even want to, like, I wake up, I'll play some of my, the, the, my best highlights, the, the stuff that I got, and I do the same thing in the morning and when I finish as well, and sometimes during the course of the day. Right? And these, these things, like, they raise the hair, the hair on my arms, all that type of stuff. And no, man, shin pads. <laughs> no, 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 no shin pads, no shin pads. My thing is, I've been there before, so I know what it looks like. I was really young at the time, but I know, I know what the pre. I, I, I used to hear Floyd Mayweather say this. Like, I've been there before. Like, you, you, you ain't got what it takes to do to beat me. I've been there before. When the lights are on you, you're gonna crumble. I feel I've been there before, so I know what it, I know what it feels like. Um, I was really young at the time. My my life experiences have changed in terms of I worked in education, so I'm a bit more rounded. I did backpacking, backpacking, traveling. So again, obviously a bit more, a bit more rounded. So I've seen some dark things. I've seen some good mm. things. Also, all sorts of stuff. So I know I personally know I've got what it takes to do what I want. Mm. And in terms of like talking about stuff like speed and stuff like I don't want to get back to. I know it's important to enjoy my life, but at the same time, pace myself. It's, it's a really a fine balance, you know, yeah. in terms of enjoying yourself but at the same time, again, having that ego and, um, yeah, it's a difficult one. But I am very, very, very quietly confident. But I'm very humble too. Yeah. Mm. Cool. <clears throat> Another excerpt I'm going to go through, so. That's right. The biggest mistake I see influencers make is they'll, they'll work with every brand on the planet. It's all about how many brands can they work with, not about the audience, not about the readership. I see no longevity there. Um, so the question from that is, do you think most, if not all, business ideas, projects must be more responsible and wary of the public perception to keep their genuine clients? And I'll go with you, Mace. To keep their, to keep their genuine clients? Yeah. I think it depends on the purpose of the, of the business. Like, is it solely to make money? Because if mm. so, I don't care who buys my stuff. Mm. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Whereas back in the day, I remember... Um, well, I heard it. I don't know. I don't know if it, allegedly, when Tommy Hilfiger said he didn't want color, people of color or black people wearing his clothes, <laughs> sorry, wearing his yeah. clothes, but he's since, I think it's since backtracked mm-hmm. or it's, it says misquoted. So I think it just depends, really. If like some people, what was I thinking about? What was I watching the other day? I was watching something the other day, and I'm sure it was something. It was something like just just keeping the identity of like what you've come from, mm. and where like what you come from, what you represent, and not kind of varying from that. And I think it, it solely depends on kind of what your purpose is. Is your end goal just to make as much money as possible? Or is it to keep your kind of soul identity and purpose and never lose that and never kind of, do you know? Like yeah. never kind of sway away from that. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense, if I broke it down. Kind of, yeah. Mm. <coughs> so I was going to ask you to repeat the question. Cool. Because the first thing that came to mind was authenticity and I was deeply... Do you think most, if not all, business ideas or projects must be more responsible and wary of the public perception to keep genuine clients? Yeah, I think that, yeah, I hundred percent. So yeah, I definitely believe that. I think being authentic, I was, like, after, I don't want to say after reading this book, but I mean, I think it's the be all, almost the be all and end all. I think if you're not authentic in a world where, in fact, it says this in the book, where people by large are like fake, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think yeah, and being authentic, I think is 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 really really important. I mean, for me personally, I think that's where you're like more, most likely to retain most of your customers or most of your consumers and have 
to ensure they have an interest in you and your brand as well. Cool. And I think just to add to that, I think it's all about the the the, the call it long term vision. Yeah. Because if you think if you if you want things short term, that's all you're really focused on tomorrow. Then it doesn't really matter. But if you want to have a long term brand then yeah, yeah, it has to come across authentic because that's how people will support, 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 support and pass through the generations. Of course. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's my that's my opinion. Because the there's time some time great time. examples in the book in regards to, I'm going to say it was the the guy who was Diddy's um, um, digital, digital mark, director, yeah. I think yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, I think to begin with, I think with what he was doing, I think he was kind of like to maybe taking offers or taking jobs from random people. But then after a while, you realise it was affecting his brand and then he started being a bit more specific mm. or targeted in regards to the people he was working with. Mm. And ultimately, obviously he got the big gig obviously with Diddy and mm. I forget the name of the brand, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good mm. story. I think we'll, we'll touch on that again later. Um, naturally, readers... I'm going to read another excerpt, sorry, before I go on. Naturally, readers were privy to all the details of Lauren's engagement and wedding, but they've also been invited to share the darker moments. Lauren's sad tender, tender ode to the, nan, the nans following the matriarch's unexpected death invited a flood of empathetic replies. And as we know, this book's a lot to do with personal branding. So I just wanted to know, is there a danger of oversharing and not having an off button when in personal branding? I definitely believe there's... I think a lot of... Yeah, I mean... We, again, we spoke about this in regards to being a bit more personable and personable with um, with fully booked. Mm -hmm. And I love social media. I do love social media. I think it's definitely got some pros, but I think it's definitely got some cons. I don't believe everyone needs to know everything about me. Mm. And not to say that I'm trying to hide anything, but I just don't believe you need to know everything about me. So on a podcast, I'll share as much as possible. But I'm not going to like, oh, so Gary was talking about um, turning the camera on when you're on vacation or something along those lines. Like... No, I mean, no, no, it doesn't have to be on when I'm on vacation or when I'm getting up to, I don't know, some madness. I might tell you about it, but you don't need to say <laughs> I don't know, man. It depends if you want it to be like, for, for me, what do you filter? What do, what, what, does, what do people want to see? Like, I was always, when I, first, when I first started my social media, I thought, is it only going to be the good, the good? Yeah. But then I just thought I'd become like every other, every other person that's on Instagram that gets Very fanboys. True. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm very very I'll talk about every dark moment, mm. but then same way you will you will catch videos of me in in the box or whatever still wherever going out acting yeah. mad yeah. because it's it's part of my character. Now I have to be careful with it because I don't want it to become reality TV. This isn't you know Alpha yeah. Kardashian or anything yeah. of that nature. <laughs> but same way I understand that it's not just it's just one D. People want to see various different facets of anyone's character, mm -hmm. and I think that. That's what makes people go, okay, very that's true. real very to true. me. Very true, very so, true. I, like, like you said, with that diary thing, that genuinely, like, that mashed me up. And I could have just kept it to myself, but I felt it was good for people to see that this journal that is a year of my life out of a stupid move and me leaving in the garage, I've ruined it. Do you know what I mean? It was that important to me. Okay, so just a quick question. So, like... I went for a period where I wasn't doing, I wasn't really writing down any, in fact, years actually. So something happened and then I stopped writing for a long time. Now, my question to you really is, would you be comfortable in sharing absolutely everything in that journal? No way. See, that's the point I'm no making. Way. <laughs> no way. No that's, way. That's what I'm talking about. No way. So I've written no. some things. So like, <laughs> I've, uh, oh, per, oh. so I've done. <laughs> 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 Listen, all right? Yeah, I get Listening. You. I when, know, I when it comes to you. whether it's backpacking, all right, mm. or Ubering, I've got some stories, all right, Come which on. I'm uncomfortable. Not uncomfortable. No, no. I don't think people need to know de those yeah, details. Yeah, yeah, got you. Those details. Yeah, got you, got and I don't think these people need to be in my, that deep in my business got, either. <laughs> yeah, but some people want to know, man. That's yeah, the, we, no, the dark. <laughs> we want to know. Yeah. <laughs> no, so like the dark days, I've got no problem in having those discussions because I think there's a, there's going to be a time and a place where you discuss those type of things. But when I'm like, so like, oh god, when I'm writing things down with the the possibility of sharing it with people, all right, I think to myself, this has got to be a bit curbed yeah. in some way, shape, or form yeah, because yeah. I can't let everybody know the entire details, you know. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I, I guess there's, I've got a bit of a responsibility because I have got kids. I have got 
And do you know what? Their world's different from mine. Like, I could release something, say something, and it's cool because I'm 34 and I have to handle pressure. Mm-hmm. What it might do for him and, and my younger kids is not really worth it. So, would I show everything in the diary and share it? No bloody way. But... But and enough enough to you for you for people. I always believe enough for people to get a real sense of who, who you I are. Am. Yeah, no, that's who cool. That's no problem. You know what I mean, that's my. my what about you, mate? I've forgotten the question. <laughs> no, because I was asking the truth. Okay. Huh? No, that's cool. Say it again, P. I think didn't he answer it? Then it came to me. I, I've actually forgot. I was so intrigued about listening to to you two guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, what was, was the question about being authentic? But uh, go on. <laughs> no, let's move on to the next question. No ways. No, you did answer it. You answered. I think you did. Yeah, he was first. Yeah, in yeah, 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 no worries. No, that's cool. Oh yeah, about the branding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. But you didn't answer it. Because I'm gonna answer <laughs> the next question. <laughs> <laughs> so passion is your backup generator when all your other um, sources start to sputter. Do you think passion is built up or is it an instant reaction? <sighs> it's both. Yeah. It's both, man, because some people have got passion because they, they, they know what they want to do. They know their energy levels as well. Some people, you wake passion up in other people. Yeah. Somebody woke passion up in me because they said to me, you could become a millionaire. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no one has ever said that to me before. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes that's why that's why I, I really believe you've got to be careful with how you address and what you say to certain people. Going back to our, you know, what we said, the first question about parents and what yeah, whatnot, yeah, yeah. because you might say something that is literally seed and then opens up that like mad, mad energy in that person. Mm-hmm. The same way you might say something that just closes down and just takes that energy away. Yeah. And I've been, I've, I've been guilty of doing both. Do you know what I mean? So, I think that's definitely important because I, not that I don't know why, but whether it's, I'm going to say primary school, but definitely primary, secondary, every single stage of education I've had, someone has spoken to me and said, you know what, there's something about you or you're special in some way, shape or form. And I think we were having a discussion the other day. Um, I forget what it was specifically about, but my mum took me to a business centre. I was 16-ish at the time. And I wrote um, a business plan in regards to developing um, like a soccer school. Gave it to the guy. He looked at it and he goes, you wrote this. <laughs> And he was stunned, and he gave me he complimented he complimented yeah, really complimented me in regards to the writing and so on and so forth and the plan. Um, but that um, I had a tutor in secondary um, not secondary school um, in college who pulled me aside one time and he just told me to like not be wary, but I mean again just telling me what I was really intelligent this and the third high school every single level of education someone's told me so I've held on to it and I've had to hold that carry it and believe that mm. they, they must have saw something with their experience that uh, made me I don't, well, I'm going to use the word special actually because mm. I believe I am yeah 100% mm. 100% how about you Mace? I think for me um, I'm just going to I'm going to use the example of football because from when I was young like I was mad passionate about football and it was something that was installed in me over a period of time and it even comes so my first name's Lee and my dad supports Leeds and okay. I said yo so, you know like my cousin's got some somebody got biblical names somebody got these powerful names <laughs> so what am I named after them? That's like Leeds. What do you mean? Leeds. Like, Leeds. Leeds. My, mom's, my middle name's, my middle name's, I'm giving it all. My middle name's Tyrone. And my mum wants to call me Tyrone, like Jamaican woman, you know? Like, a bit, bit more masculine, a bit more like, yo, Tyrone? You know I mean? <laughs> so, Who's on the phone? My dad was like, nah, he's getting Lee. Like, my dad's a bit more geezer, isn't he? So he's like, Lee. But, like, yeah, football, for instance, Lee. like, it just that passion just built up. So my older brother, like when I was younger, he supported Aston Villa, and I remember like he wanted to support Aston Villa. He's not supporting some matches. I know, isn't it? I know, I know. You don't even know. I but like, my brother was Aston Villa, so I started watching. I remember the first game I watched, it was a League Cup final, it was Aston Villa, Man United, and I remember they had Daly Naxon and Dean Saunders up front. Jeez, and, and, man listen. Day, huh? I said, it's the first black man I saw play with some style. Like, they like to play with some st- When I watched that game, I said, yo, this guy got style. Yeah. I said, I said, bro, go get me that burgundy top. That's what I said, yeah. <laughs> but then what happened now, when I started, then obviously you get to football, started playing football and that. And then, like, I started developing my own kind of, like, who I like. And I remember um, when I, the first thing I proper went into football, Newcastle come up. So that's what Newcastle. Okay. Newcastle come up. <laughs> and they had, they had, they had Andy Cole. They was, I remember Andy Cole was there and this one is young, rough, rough diamond. He was just on it. Bang. He's, I think he's top scorer that season, 30 odd goals. And prim. I remember thinking, yo, this team in black and white and this guy up front, that's my team. Yeah. Stretching it up. <laughs> that's my yeah. team. <laughs> nah, and that's, and I, I just stick with them. They're shit now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I think it's something that can be, like it was in, it was kind of, it was, it built up. And yeah. like to the, to the point where now, 
Like I've travelled with P to go watch Barcelona play. I've been to Dortmund to watch football. I've been to like Berlin. I've been to a lot of countries just to go and watch football, you know. Yeah. And we we'll work a weekend around it. But I love football. Do you know what I'm saying? But then there's other things you get a little passionate about as well. Like I don't know, like uh, you know when someone takes your heart and that. You know what I mean? Well, if you're out in a club, you had a few hennies and that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Passion fever. <laughs> But, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, it's a, yeah. I agree. I think it's a bit both. Yeah, I think yeah, I agree. Both, I think it's important to have passion as well. And I, do you know, I, when you ask that question, I started to think, yo, like, I'm not as passionate as I once was about things. Like, mm-hmm. I, it's almost like I, I don't get that urge. Fire. Yeah, I don't get it as I used to get it so much. I don't think it's that. Yeah. Well, go on, tell me. Generally, I think it's that you just understand the value of things now. Do you think? Yeah, I think when we're younger, we just get gassed by everything. We see a girl, oh my god. We yeah. see a car, oh my god. We see an opportunity, oh my god. Yeah. And then now you you get to a certain level where you can just kind of like you can almost judge things a hell of a lot better and place the right amount of value on it. So okay. you're, you, I don't believe in anyone's not passion. Passion. They they haven't got mm. passion. I think something needs to bring it up. And mm-hmm. when you're younger, anything could bring it out. <laughs> Literally, anything could bring it out. And as you get older, you just become a bit more selective. So, so I guess, like being an art age group and our demographic, how would you how how would you cultivate your your passion if you haven't yet found it? If it's not something that you go into work and you think this is my working passion, it it might be something outside of work. It might be something mm. you do as a hobby. How would you identify something and make it brainstorming? Passion? Okay. Mm. brainstorming I say all the answers are up here in this massive excellent computer mm. but we don't put the brain under enough stress we go for the first answer what should I have today chicken and chips done <laughs> get another chicken and chips done uh... yeah? seriously it's like the first thing we just accept it yeah. you see what I mean but reasoning reasoning means you put your brain under pressure <laughs> And when you put yourself under pressure, it's like a stone. It'll like, 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 like force it, crack. Do you know what I mean? You hit, 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 or crack, and you get the answer you actually really mm. want and need. But nobody wants that. Everyone wants a shortcut. What are you having to that? Take away chicken and chips. Yeah. See you know what I mean? That's yeah. literally how we act. Yeah. Weak. So, it, it, it's true, isn't it? It's the truth. It's the truth. But when you put yourself under that pressure, you always get the answer. So if you're not passionate at the moment, it's because you're not putting yourself under pressure to ask what it is you actually want. You're just accepting everything that you're seeing around you. Oh, that person's got this, I want that. Yeah. But when you go back, do you actually really mm. want that? Yeah. 